Welcome to Season 4 of Adventures in the Spirit with Jared Lasky. This podcast is not just information, but impartation and activation. We believe that every conversation will encourage, equip, and empower you to live the daily supernatural life. Subscribe to this podcast and then share every episode with your friends and family and be activated. Oh, and welcome to another adventure in the Holy Spirit. I'm your host, Jared Lasky. It's been a very productive day, and uh, I just want you to draw near to Jesus through this time. I've got an incredible conversation coming up for you with Andy Reese. But before I jump into his bio, I want to encourage you, if you need to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, I have a free PDF available for you in the podcast description on how to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And it's biblical and it leads you in an activation to receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I also have my my new book, The Baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's doing well uh, going and there's even conversation of getting it uh, translated into Urdu and for Slovenia and some events in, in those places as well. Got a testimony in that a pastor had preached some of the principles from it. He saw five people in his church receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit as well. So you could get that book on Amazon, on Barnes & Noble, anywhere you purchase books online, Apple Books and places like that. But you know, Fireborn Ministries, we live to see Jesus awaken this generation to the power of the Holy Spirit. So that's why we provide the resource. So if you need to receive the baptism of the Spirit, you could get the book or the How to Receive the Baptism of the Holy Spirit free PDF available in this podcast description. But guys, I'm excited to be introducing you to Andy Reese. He's got a, a new book out called The Spiritual Gifts Blueprint. He's a veteran in the ministry. He's been in Christian ministry for more than 45 years. He's got leadership experience. He's the founder and president of Freedom Prayer and author of other Christian books, He's currently in Nashville, and he travels the world speaking and teaching, and you could go to his website, andyreese.org, but help me welcome Andy to Adventures in the Spirit. Welcome, Andy. Thank you. I really appreciate it, and I'm honored to be here with you, Jared. Appreciate it. Well, you're welcome, and the honor's all mine, but Andy, uh, can you share some of your background and your adventure in the Holy Spirit, how you got to experience Him in your life? Yeah, I sure can. Yeah, so I was... uh, you probably saw the movie about the Jesus movement back in the 70s, and I was one of those guys. So I uh, I was saved at a Billy Graham crusade in 72, and um, about a week later, I was uh, out in the woods kind of being disappointed because my, my big plan to win the whole campground for Jesus didn't uh, pan out. And uh, two young men came walking up a trail and said, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? And I said, not sure what that means, and they prayed with me, and started praying in tongues and uh, said, okay. And uh, since then, I, I like, I'm sure all of us have had uh, filling after filling after filling for various things. And it's been wonderful because we all leak. And so um, I, I have always been one of those people who sees something missing in the body of Christ or wrong and, and think, I can fix that. I'm an engineer. You know, I, I can do that. You know, it's just like, because go oh, dad, you know, but um and so I've, I've had some great experience, uh, kind of uh, the, the, the atheists had gone after the, the Magi story. You know, this is a joke, you know, and they had billboards up all over the country. And um, I said, I don't think it's a joke. I think it's scriptural. So I, I was able to, to really prove it from non-biblical sources, uh, just exactly as it happened from, from uh, astronomy and everything. And, and the billboards went down. And... Uh, and my, my speech had 120,000 views on YouTube, so it's, it's still up there. And I said, okay, that's, I love that kind of thing. So uh, some 20 years ago, we started Freedom Prayer, which is how, how do we take all those verses that say, all the one another verses, confess your sins to one another, and you go, how do you do that, really? It, 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 there just doesn't seem to be a way in church to really do that unless you go see the pastor, and then you're, nervous about it and embarrassed. And so we, we created that to make it very, very easy. And it's in 14 countries now and probably mm-hmm. 200 churches and, and people in, in one or two hours can just find freedom. It's just been crazy when God shows up and someone who doesn't even think they can hear God going, I'm sitting with the father. I'm sitting with the father. Oh my gosh. You, know, you, you sit there and you're just going, oh, this is this is awesome. And um, the question came up some years ago, what am I free to? What should I be doing with my life? 
and I, I looked around at all the various books out there and I said, I don't think any of these are actually biblical. I, I mean, I don't mean to be judgmental and I'm not that smart, but I think Paul gave us a really, really good uh, uh, scripture on it. First uh, Corinthians 12, he said, you know, there are, there are four parts to the structure of the spirit world in which you walk. And I've never heard anybody talk about them. I've heard people talk about pieces. And I said, I wonder if I can write a book on those four pieces. And man, it's, uh, I've been shocked. There was a whole conference on it in Connecticut, seven churches, just on the book itself, flew me up and said, okay, go over these four pieces with us. You know, we want to hear them. And so that's that's been great. And um, tested on a couple hundred people here in Nashville. Lipscomb University, a very conservative university, um, said, we want to you to come and teach us this. And I said, you know, it's, I mean, it's charismatic. And they said, no, it's biblical. Come on. It's, it's, it's neither. It's just in the Bible. And so come. And so, so I've just been very favored. James Gall wrote the forward to it. Uh, an old friend of mine, he said, you wrote stuff I've never thought of. Huh. Can I write the forward? And I said, yeah, oh, would you, <laughs> you know, please? <laughs> so, so I feel very, very blessed and, and honored uh, by the things that people have said and by the impact it's had uh, really beyond what I would think, but I, I'm just really happy about it. Yeah. Well, that, that's exciting. I, I love the book. Okay. I'm almost done with it, oh, wow. but it is, it is biblical, but real quick, before I jump into some of the more details of that, you shared how you were, these guys just asked you, have you received the baptism of the spirit? Was that a normal question back then? Or? Well, well, yes, it was back, back then uh, that, that, the baptism spirit was sweeping uh, college kids, college campuses. It, it was a, it was a, it was a normal thing, and I apparently expressed just some, uh, some dissatisfaction, and sadness over, you know, this plan I had to to give free hot dogs and marshmallows to everybody at the campsite and talk to them about Jesus around the campfire. And nobody showed up, and uh, there are three of us doing it, and I think they just sensed that. I was kind of motoring under my own power a little too much and asked me the question and, you know, they may have been angels for all I know. So they, yeah. they walked back into the woods. I never saw them again. And uh, I, I never knew their names or anything. So it was, wow. yeah, that's amazing. We need to see more of that. My son, he's 18 years old, Zechariah. He's my oldest, oldest son. He's in youth with a mission in Lausanne. Oh yeah. He called me today. And they were having worship time and he God was using him to prophesy over some of his fellow peers. Yeah. But he felt led to ask someone, his one of his friends, that they want to receive their spiritual language. And the student, his peer, said yes. And my son was praying for him. He's like, just ask. And my son said he put his hand on his friend's heart and said, Lord, fill him. Fill him with your spirit. And it, they were both slain in the spirit in that moment. And the, the student was speaking in tongues. And uh, my son calls me because he's like, Dad, this is right up your alley. Can you send more resources? I was like, sure. So I sent some video and resources. But this needs to be a daily occurrence in, uh, for today's j day and age, I think, especially in the times that yeah. we currently live in. We need to see more of yeah. it. But and Yeah. And, and if we can make it not a charismatic thing, not a non-charismatic thing, but just a Bible thing, right. just a, you know, and just, you know, Let's take the stylization out of it and just make it real. And that's been really what I tried to do in the book where uh, a lot of the endorsers are very, very conservative. One is the, the wife of the president of Lipscomb University endorsed it. And I said, aren't you going to get in trouble? She says, no, this is Bible. Amen. This is Bible. And so, uh, yeah. Well, you mentioned the Apostle Paul and the four things that he elaborates on. So can you share that with, with our audience right now? Yeah, I sure can. So, so he's writing to the Corinthians who, who had, you know, they were speaking tongues without interpretation. Uh, they were prophesying without uh, waiting for each other. Uh, they, they had disorderly service. I, they probably had bigger problems than just that, but, but, you know, go to a counselor after I'm done with you here with this letter. But, um, and, and he said, look, he said concerning, and now the words become really important to us because when we get these words wrong, 
we don't do wrong things, but we do things and name them wrongly. We get them out of order. And so Paul said, now concerning pneumaticos, the structure of the spirit world. He, in, in Corinthians, he talks about three kinds of men, the sarkikos man, the flesh man, the psychikos man, the psychological man, and the pneumaticos man, the spiritual man. And he says, you should be pneumaticos. So now here he is telling you how to be a spiritual man, telling the Corinthians, because they were out of order. Uh, and he said, now concerning pneumaticos, I don't want you to be ignorant. There is a analysis that you can do of charisma gifts and one Holy Spirit check there is an and he uses this word diiresis which is from plato which is a thorough end-to-end -end analysis of this truth and you you organize it you look at each part of it and you learn truth and paul says look i have done these these plato he was a platonic scholar i have done these analyses there's an analysis you can do of charisma gifts and one holy spirit there's an analysis you can do of how ministry works and one Jesus, who's who you connect with with that. He's the head of the body. You're in the body. It's not a corporation. It's a body, a again. living body. It's not a corporation. It's not, it's not, he's not the corporate head. He's the brain and your finger. Think about how the finger and the brain are connected, and you'll get some idea what Christ in you, the hope of glory, looks like. We don't we don't do things for God. We do things with God. And that is job one for us to learn that and then he says now there's also a, a variety of of energema energizings from the father and um while uh, while the gifts are in romans 12 what what paul calls the gifts are in romans 12 he calls them charisma gifts right in romans 12 and the ministries are in ephesians 4 he he, he lays out his analysis in ephesians 4 and the manifestations of the spirit, he never really calls them gifts. If you look hard at it, you go, ooh, these are not called gifts of the spirit, except when it's lumped in with a bunch of other things, but it is called manifestation of the spirit. By changing the name to manifestations, you don't lose anything. You still got all nine of them. They're still, they're still the same thing, but you then make space to, to deal with the confusion about get what gifts of the spirit are. And so he says, uh, and you, uh, silly uh, Corinthians, the Holy Spirit also distributes the nine manifestations of the Spirit. And here's what they are, because that's the topic I'm writing to you about. But if I didn't tell you those other three things first, you'd go back to craziness. These things are the power tools to support those other three things. And if you use them in any other way, they get out of order. Yeah. But if you use them as, as God's power tools, it, you know, you're you're let's say you're an you're an exhorter that's your primary kind of motivation the lens you see things through and um you're working with jesus and he's he's brought you to a place of exhorting a group of people and the father is strengthening you and providing guidance for you and he he caused it to come about in the first place but you need a power tool you need a you need a word of knowledge you you need you need uh, a word of wisdom to give to these people. And the Holy Spirit says, got you covered. Come on. And all of a sudden you're saying things you've never said before. And you're wanting to take notes because the Holy Spirit is now in you with these manifestations. And so that's how the four work. And when we realize that all four are ours um, and they are called pneumaticos, they're, they're what being spiritual is all about. And it connects me with every part of the Trinity. That's right. When, when you get this, your relationship with Jesus radically changes because you say, okay, my relationship with Jesus is about what he's calling me to do. And I can have long conversations with him about that. And they come alive. You know, it's like all of a sudden you go, whoa, okay. Or with the father, the father, it says, Paul says the father has two roles. Um, he, he provides and he enables, he steers, I'm sorry, he steers and he enables. Those are, those are two words that, uh, are in the book that Paul uses when he describes a father steering and enabling authoritative steering, like the captain of a ship. The word is, is that and enabling is someone with infinite resources who resources you. And he's, and when you realize that's what he does, he steers and he enables. 
and I can talk to him every day That's about right. that. Wow. Life, life changes. And, uh, you, I mean, I go for a walk nearly every day and we'll sit on a bench and, and say, uh, father, uh, or Papa, you know, the Holy Spirit says, call him Abba, call him dad, you know, come boldly into the throne room. You don't have to yeah. knock. You don't need an appointment. And you can just say, Father, uh, I'm concerned about this. Will you show me? Will you help me? And he does. And it's crazy. So anyway. Well, I love that. Yeah. As you're talking, like I'm seeing flashes of light. I mean, it's just, it's not from these lights that I have in here, but like it's, there's a holy angelic presence right now. So thank you, Jesus, for that. But yeah. Andy, um, yeah. what, what would you say to someone who, oh, thank you, Jesus. Whew. Wow. Don't faint on me. We got to keep Jesus. <laughs> wow. No. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the glory. Thank you, Lord. All right. Yeah. Uh, those of you listening or watching, may you receive in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, fire of God, the power of God. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Okay, yeah. Andy. <laughs> Okay, here we go. <laughs> My question, what would you say to someone who doesn't, they're searching for their spiritual gifts, they're looking for what they have, maybe they've received their prayer language, but they're unsure, how, yeah. how do they find their gifts? Yep, so I would first say, those nine things in First Corinthians are called manifestations of the spirit. Everything's a gift that we get from God. All of those are yours. You, you don't you don't have those are power tools that come when faith meets need so you don't it, it's like oh i guess I, I won't speak i don't get tongues that must not be my gift that's bull all of those are yours when faith meets need now let's talk about the the, the gifts of the spirit in romans 12 peter says there are seven just like there's seven primary colors but there's a million colors peter says there's uh, or Peter says there's, there's two kinds of gifts, speaking and serving, and then he calls them the multicolored grace of God, right? Paul then says, here are the colors, these seven, three speaking, three serving, one leading, which is part speaking and part serving. And so the speaking gifts are, if we, and, and I turn them into a wheel to make it really, really simple to find your gift. So the, on the back cover of the book, there's, a, there's this color wheel, yeah, right there. There it is. And it makes it extraordinarily simple to find your gift with two simple questions, which is kind of fun. But you realize in the wheel, one half of it is speaking gifts. So that would be starting around the wheel. It'd be exhorting, teaching and prophecy. And the other half is serving gifts. And that would be one who shows mercy, one who serves, one who gives. And then the leader is kind of some of both. And so the first, and so your gifting is primarily either speaking or serving. Um, now, can you do all of those? Yes, yeah, if you're a Christian, you can do all of those, but we're not talking about the kinds of things you do. We're talking about your basic motivation in any situation, your, the, the, the lens that you see things through. And that's just one thing. If you had to switch your lens every couple of years, it'd be horrible. <laughs> um, it's like having to change your personality. You become DID, you know, you become Christian DID people, dissociative identity disorder, because you're making me switch my gifting. No, you have one place that you live, but you can visit places. So um, if you look at the wheel, here's the first question. Um, <clears throat> if you, um, if I asked you, um, hey, it's, it's Wednesday, and I know it's late, but um, there's a there's a city council meeting this Friday. They have somebody come in and give a talk about something that would be of interest to council. And you're um, the the person canceled. And I just wondered if you if you'd be willing to do that. It'd be about thirty minutes. The mayor will be there. Oh, and it's televised. And so you say, okay, how do you feel when when you just been asked that question? The person whose primary gifting is in the speaking area goes nervous but kind of excited i could do it yeah i could and, and it doesn't matter how mature they are in that gifting they still feel a nervous sense of i could do this it, I, i've tried it out 
<laughs> and a couple of people, I tried it out for real. I mean, I, I fooled them into thinking this was a real thing just to, I said, okay, how are you feeling? Okay. And they said, Andy, I'm going to kill you, <laughs> but thank you because now I'm, now I know I'm bold with my gifting. Thank you. <clears throat> if on the other hand, you go, no way, there's no possible way. And your friends go, no, no way. I, I, I this would kill me. I can't do it. Um, then uh, there's a different question we ask. So if you think speaking might be it, then the next question is you have one sermon. You, you've been asked to preach one sermon at church. Is your sermon something like, we're a pretty amazing church. We do a lot of really great things. And there's one area that I've been looking at that if we could just tweak it a little, improve on it and just a little, that would round out so much about the church. And, and I want to talk a little bit about that area, not, not because we're horrible, but because we're the kind of people who want to go after God. Okay, if that was your thing, pointing out something that was not quite up to snuff, that would be the prophet, the one who prophesies, because prophets are all about, is it, uh, true, uh, is it uh, right or is it wrong? So it's kind of like true and false with an attitude. Is it right or is it wrong? And they can, you know, if the, the joke about a prophet is they can see a spot of gravy on the bride's dress from 50 feet away when she's walking down the aisle. You know, it's like and that's all they'll see. And they'll they'll want to point it out. You know, and you just say, you need to get you need to grow up. You need to be a nice prophet, not a mean prophet. Um, and so, um, yeah, so that's so that's prophecy. If your sermon is, man, there's this pattern in scripture that I, 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 I've been studying and it's crazy good, and it will change a lot about your life. And I want to share that with you. That's the teacher, because the teacher is about true and false, and they they want strong biblical God truth to be sown into people's lives. And when they see falseness or exaggeration, it bugs them. You know, the the teacher they they'll see a some speaker exaggerating or drawing attention to themselves, and they're they're just like incensed a little bit by it. Then um, if your sermon is about, there are some people in this church who, who have uh, really not been recognized. And I've got plants in the audience today sitting next to them. And we're going to call them up and, and different people are going to talk about what they do in the body that you never see. Because we want to honor them today. Because the ones of us who speak up front, we get honored all the time. But we're going to give honor to those who don't get honor. That's what we're going to do today. And so that would be the exhorter, the one who encourages. And they see what needs to be encouraged. And they, they speak encouragement into it. And, and they, they don't just speak, but they move to bring encouragement into situations. Um, lack of people fulfilling their calling and, and, and growing into who they're called to be just bugs the exhorter. They're just like, no, you're more than this. Um, uh, yeah. And so exhortation is, is called a parakaleo, to run alongside and call. And uh, the exhorter is, is like the Holy Spirit, is called mm -hmm. the paraclete, the, the parakaleo. Um, so anyway, um, if, on the other hand, you're, you're serving, then let's set up a different situation. You're, in a, you're part of a serving staff, a, a small team that's serving a big table of business people celebrating their year-end profits. And they have all ordered these super frou-frou drinks that have umbrellas on them and they're really expensive drinks. And they've been waiting 20 minutes at the restaurant's busy and the drinks aren't there. And they're kind of giving you looks and, and you go, I know they're coming, they're coming. You know, just hang on, just hang on. All of a sudden the door opens and out comes a young waiter with a tray of drinks and they know they're their drinks. They're watching the guy's coming. He comes close to the table and he slips on a stairway. The tray tilts. All the drinks go crash, clatter, splash on the floor. The, the whole restaurant hushes. The table, all their heads jerk around. They look at their drinks on the floor. And you're standing there about five feet from the waiter. What do you do? What is your immediate response? If you're not a speaker, what is your immediate response as someone who serves? Do you, A, go straight to the person and say, are you okay? This could have happened. Don't worry. Don't 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 freak out. This could have happened. Anybody will take care of it. But uh, but are you okay? I want to make sure. If that's your first move, then you're one who shows mercy, mm -hmm. because because showing mercy to that person in their time of need uh, trumps every possible thing you would do. 
if you go straight to the mess, it's a mess. We got to clean up the mess. There's, you know, there's water going under this tape. People are going to slip. They're going to cut themselves on the black. We got to pick up this mess. Then you're the one who serves because you're all about practical stuff that needs to be done. And that practical stuff motivates you. You show up with a truck and a trailer because someone's moving and you have to help. You need to serve them and you're going to be there. And, uh, or, um, if you go straight to the kitchen to get more drinks because they need drinks, they, they paid for drinks. They didn't get drinks. We're going to comp the drinks. You're one who gives mm -hmm. because you want to create excellence and you want to make sure that whatever organization you're part of is excellent and does what it says it's going to do and more. And so you're, you're all about giving then. Now, if you're standing there and you go, well, I could do any of those things, but really somebody has got to organize all this. Then you're the leader we're looking right. for, you know? <laughs> then you're the one who leads. And so, um, with those questions, I've, I've gone through that exercise with probably 200 people and a uh, whole classes, a whole class of 70 kind of people, uh, uh, nursing students and stuff at Lipscomb. And it's been really fun to watch the lights come on with them. And I put up uh, posters and the posters are in an appendix in the book uh, with detailed descriptions of each of the each of the seven gifts. But I put up posters around and uh, uh, it's just fun to watch them gather around the posters and, and figure out who they are. And uh, in fact, there was a, a woman who was uh, a young student who was crying and I went back and I said, Oh, I broke another one. Thanks dad. You know, I went back. Are you okay? And she goes, no, no, these are happy tears. And I said, you're going to be in the book. What's going on? <laughs> and she said, I, I'm, I'm in nursing, but I hate nursing. I'm, I'm majoring in nursing, but I don't, I don't have any bedside manner. I don't want to do bedpans. Blood freaks me out. I don't, but why am I here? And I called my dad and said, I'm going to drop out of college. I, I mean, until I figure out what I'm going to do. But when you started describing uh, one who leads and then the girl who's standing with her kid said, I hit her on the shoulder and said, that is you. And she goes, that's that was me. I want to be a nurse to give nurses a fair shake in life. And I need a nursing degree to do that. But you in in you know, 15 minutes describing the one who leads, you changed my whole life. And thank you. Man. I, I, I'm crying with happiness. And I thought, okay, if we can do that for people, if we can describe things in a way where they go, yeah, that, wow, that feels like me. Yeah, that's good. And so the gift circle is a way to, to show that because everybody has an arc in the circle. And uh, there aren't any lines in the circle. Peter calls the, these gifts the, the many colored grace of God, the rainbow colored grace of God. And so we each have an arc and it, it's typically in, it's in speaking or in serving, but it can kind of go from one edge of the pie piece to the other edge and across the edge. And so my exhortation is my primary gifting, but it goes into teaching. I, I teach as I exhort, if it was on the other side, the, the one who shows mercy, my exhortation would go really into into uh, quiet encouragement and being with people and and just speaking quiet encouragement and exhortation to them instead of me, my loud <laughs> exhortation. So that's kind of how the gifts work, I think, and we can find them very easily, very very easily. Uh, awesome! It's always an honor and a pleasure to be part of seeing people identify their spiritual gifts one way or another. I know that there are different spiritual yeah. gifts. Uh, tests out there, but I just want to encourage people, ask the Holy Spirit, start talking to people, asking them questions, but also get Andy's book, The Spiritual Gifts Blueprint. So Andy, what is the best way for people or where can they purchase your book? Yeah, um, well, it's on Audible too, so you can listen to it. The narrator is unbelievably good. I listened to it twice and I even wrote the book just because the way he expresses it, I thought that's way better than I can do it. So it's on Kindle and it's on Amazon. So you can get all three, uh, get it all three there. Uh, if somebody is is just wanting to give a Christmas present of a signed copy, uh, they can just connect with me um, uh, at uh, Andy at AndyReese.org and just say, hey, I'd love to buy a signed copy from you and I'll, I'll figure out how to do oh, that. Awesome. I've done that for about 200 people now. And, and uh, it's fun to, especially if they say it's not for me, it's for my aunt and 
I say, tell me about your aunt, and then I'll write something cute for the aunt. And, and that's, uh, I love doing Awesome. That. And then they could go to your webpage, andyreese.org. Yep. And then don't forget the study guide. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I don't have the study guide, but I've got the book right here. Yes, there you go. So the study guide is is designed for people who want to learn this but are afraid to teach it. It's for you. Awesome. Well, Andy, uh, normally I'll do an activation and then ask people what is the best way for them, yeah. you know, buy your book or go to your website. But I really feel like I'd like to end this time where you pray, activate yeah. people to encounter the Holy Spirit. Would you mind doing that? Not at all. Not at all. Um, yeah, Paul prayed it. I'll pray it. <clears throat> so, mm, Father God, I just ask you on behalf of these, because you want them to come into everything you have for them. You want them to come into their gifting and then to use their gifting in the ministry that Jesus has called, the works that are prepared for them, like Ephesians 2.10 says, you want them to come into those works. And Father, you want to do those things with them. You want to enable them and resource them. You smile when they're pursuing their gifting and then the works. And Holy Spirit, you say, I've got a bunch of power tools to help do it, and I'm waiting to help them. And so, Father, I ask you now to breathe into each of these by your Holy Spirit a sense of their gifting, but more than that, a confidence that finding their gifting is your will and it's easy, easy to do. They have to try not to find it. It's like Easter eggs that have been hidden for them, not from them. And so, Lord, I ask you, help them to, to find the Easter eggs of their gifting. Help them to understand their gifting. Help them then to, to move right into tongues, easy prophecy, the, the various manifestations of the Spirit. And Jesus, help them to walk with you in the things you've given them to do, that you can become best friends. And Father, help them to sit with you and hear you because they don't, they don't have to knock. They can come boldly into your throne room and find grace and help. So in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Father, Jesus and Holy Spirit, flow into them now. Begin to flow into them. It has nothing to do with them. It has only thing to do with you and their willingness to say yes. So flow into them now in a new way and let that new way just be returned to again and again until it grows unbounded in their lives. And they say this day, on this time, things began for me. And I say yes in Jesus' name. So when you first started praying, I was in the spirit and yeah. i found myself amongst a forest a wilderness trees and just kind of wandering and I, I think that people who will watch or listen to this some of them may feel like they're just wandering in the wilderness lost but yeah. then the they were course corrected and then in this experience this vision i stepped out into the light no more trees out of the wilderness and, she, yeah. and then I, I saw the mountain of the Lord and it was bright and glorious and, mm -hmm. and it was ascending upward. So I think when people will listen to this, some of them are coming out of the wilderness. Now is the time for you to come out of your wilderness, into your giftings, into your call, into your in yeah. Jesus name. Yeah, I, I just love that. My, the, the only verse they have to know about this book is Ephesians 2.10. You are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works that the Father has prepared beforehand. Just walk in him. Amen. It's all set up. Andy, it was an honor and a pleasure to have you on Adventures in the Spirit. <clears throat> when you mentioned, I would love to bring you back to talk about freedom prayer because that's also right up my alley, brother. So if you don't mind, I'll yeah. reach back out <clears throat> to you. But I want to encourage everybody, go to andyreese.org and also purchase his book, The Spiritual Gifts Blueprint, available anywhere you get your books, on Kindle, on Amazon, and uh, audio Audible as well. Audible too, yes. Yeah, it's, it's out there. And love to come back and talk about the manifestations too. I, I've learned some things about tongues in my worldwide travels that have blown my mind. Man. Well, love to have you back, brother. Yeah. Guys, share this episode with your friends and family. Text it, post it on social media, and may they be blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you.
Thank you so much for listening to Adventures in the Spirit with Jared Lasky, a podcast that activates you to live the supernatural life. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform and share it with your friends. Leave a five-star rate and review, which helps us reach more people with the love and power of the Holy Spirit and partner with us at firebornministries.com. And may you live your best spirit-empowered life and have your own adventures in the Holy Spirit.